look, the whole crew has gone through this terrible ordeal, yes. and we're not fine, even though we think we're fine. So then I thought they were adding on the layer of, and the ship isn't fine either. <laughs> like the ship went through this because the ship's like. Let's get the ship a counselor. <laughs> yeah, we need the ship counselor. Where's Bella and Troy when we? Yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hey, Internet. It's Paul. It's Matt. The Dork Lords. We were here talking about Star Trek Discovery. Season 3, Episode 4, Forget Me Not. We open this who episode with... Well, who are you? Who what? Who are you? Oh, I'm, sorry. I'm, You're Matt. Sorry, I just... <laughs> <laughs> you, you forgot me, Paul. I did. I forgot you. And so you have forgotten yourself. No, I'm a big <laughs> cloud of a lion right now talking to you. Okay. Um, I forgot what the opening is now. Okay, no, right. Do you want to do it again? Because that's really not worth keeping. (laughs) Um, We open Mm. with a voiceover from Culber. Uh, He is discussing basically the PTSD among the crew. He's going around giving little vital signs, checking them all out. Physically, they're more or less fine. uh, But emotionally, they're not. He basically says they're feeling lost disconnected I feel like there's a sense of desperation about them as well like here we're trapped in this area we our family and friends are gone and we're in this future world and we're never gonna see them again right um, and he mentions he says basically he's trying to help them but first they have to accept help and that's kind of what we see is one of the arcs of this episode is that eventually Detmer goes from not accepting help to being willing to accept help Sure. Also, the fact he mentions that one of the mantras trying to keep them going right now is when we find the Federation. Yes. You know, finding the Federation is the sense of belonging, right? We've, nah, our place in the world, we found it. And so they're using that as a target to reach some kind of a emotional stasis. Um, we'll talk more about that. But we end with Adira playing the cello with Gray, the ghost of Gray Tall. Um, and the ship is heading off to the secret location of the uh, Federation headquarters. That In the trailer for next week, we see they arrive and it, there's some hijinks that will ensue. Yes. Um, so now's probably a good time to bring up, a, we mentioned this last week, but just to clarify on Adira uh, is being played by a non-binary actor. Um, and even though at the moment we hear Adira's name uh, using they the refer she to pronouns, as a she, yes, he, her. Um, I think they are heading in the direction of kind of a non-binary choice for uh, Adira, the character as well. Especially That's now that uh, Gray is with Adira, and so I think collectively they're going to be referred to as they. If I had to guess, yeah, yeah. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to call Adira they. We're going to use the they pronouns. Uh, when we I'm, describe Adira. Uh, I'm wondering why they decided to make um, Adira 15 since the uh, actor playing Adira is older than that. It's like, you know, what are you getting out of that? I don't know Right, why. right. What what plot point are you achieving by making Adira a team? Yeah, or aspect, you know. Um, yeah. It's like, that's quite a, like, without parental guidance, apparently, he uh, they decided to take on this, you know, um, life-changing thing. Oh, right. In the spur of the moment, it's like, oh, my God, Gray's dying. Uh, put the trail into me, in other words. Yeah. 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 Uh, didn't Gray also say that they were um, an orphan? That sounds familiar, but I guess I, I don't know 100%. Anyway. We, we, well, we do know this. Um, one of the things that Adira is missing is anything before. Like, yes. What is the last thing, thing you remember? Before, yeah. I remember waking up in an escape pod a year mm. ago. So that means, I mean, Adira does not know whether they, you know, like all of these, um, all the knowledge that Adira has, is any of it actually Adira's? Or is right. it all related to the trill? It's like, hey, I know seven languages. Do I? <laughs> you know. <it's> like, yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, so right. So a big part of this episode is retrieving Adira's memory. Memories, basically, of various uh, talls, uh, trill talls. Yeah. Yeah, the Charles so, memory to be more right, specific. Right. To be more to me but also they completely forgot about 
uh, their memories, their life before uh, the incident. Right, or at least, right. at least, you know, superficially maybe. Maybe they remember uh, certain aspects, but not everything. I think it's interesting that they're not telling, that the writers aren't telling a lot, right? Um, they can still make some decisions about uh, how this character progresses by not True. giving the full history. So some of that might be in flux, actually. In order to retrieve both Adira's memories and the Trill's memories, uh, the decision is made to go to Trill, the planet, Yes. Uh, in order to basically say, hey, we've got a person who's a Trill host, and that person uh, can't remember anything. So yes. help us. Um, yeah. and, so and I guess we could, it, we could refer to uh, it as the symbiont. Okay. So the symbiont, the symbiont would be the uh, Tal, uh, Tal entity. Adira calls the symbiont uh, the squid. But yeah. Yes, that's true, yeah. Uh, I got the squid in me. Uh, and so, obviously, the byproduct of remembering everything will be also remembering Senatal's consciousness. And Senatal yes. was an admiral in Federation, and so they can figure out where the Federation is, which inevitably they do in this episode. Yes. So, you've got basically two big plots going on. One is the activity happening on Trill, and the other is... Uh, uh, Saru's attempt to deal with the PTSD among the crew. Yeah. Hey, let's have a big dinner. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. you know it doesn't go well, but it does basically. But yes. so, so those are your two plot lines. Um, which plot line do you want to cover first, sir? Uh, we are already talking about the, the trill. Uh, trill one, so let's let's, let's stick with that. Let's stick with okay. that. So, uh, one of the things that does interesting to me is uh, they initially set it up as like, wow, we don't know if this planet will be receptive to us. So as soon as they introduce the, oh, you know, we actually have a trill here, they're like, okay, we love you, come on down. But of course, well, they're just setting us up for uh, yeah, yeah. the further um, theme of uh, exclusion. Right? Well, also there would be, I would think you'd have some. Some expectation that it, that they'd be friendly in that, from the sphere data, you know that there were trills in the Federation at one time, and you also know that Senatal was an admiral in the Federation, you know, like a decade ago. So you feel like, sure, could things have gone off the rails in the meantime? Yes, but you gotta feel like, okay, there's a reasonable chance that if we show up as a Federation, you know, we've had some kind of relationship with this planet, uh, you know, over the years. But right. Well, I guess that's why they were in um, uh, yellow alert and not red alert. Not red alert. <laughs> red alert. Red alert. <laughs> Black alert. Uh oh, they're going <laughs> to. So Trill's like, oh, whoa, you've got a symbiote. Well, we lost a whole bunch of them in the burn. Oh, uh, boy. Awesome. Send them down. Uh, and well, so... technically, I believe what they lost was a number of uh, hosts. Oh, okay. Because one right. of the things that well, was uh, introduced also lose previously, the and that was actually an interesting thing about it. So in uh, Deep Space Nine, it was established that uh, not every not every trill could be a uh, host for the symbionts. But then they had a subsequent episode where it was like, actually, you know what? It doesn't. You don't need to. You know, be so picky we about it. We were blowing that a little bit. So. Yeah. So. Um, that was, I, I think, actually something that wasn't really dealt with especially. So here they're actually reintroducing the fact that it's not so easy to just put uh, a symbiont into someone. And they're holding to the fact that, well, I shouldn't say holding to, right? Because they just put it into a human, and they haven't really explained why they could. I got the feeling that the implication was... Uh, obviously, the situation... That was willingness? Dying. Like it was like it's yes. about uh, consent? That... That it's the right. It's the symbiont who gets to choose, and so maybe the symbionts are just really selective. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't want that. It oh, could you, be okay. right. I mean, certainly the uh, previous episode that we saw, that uh, I guess it was the first time, right, when Riker had to take on a symbiont, and that didn't go well. Ah. Um, okay. That's why they had to eventually move that symbiont into some into another creature. So, for in order to survive, it had to be into Riker, and then they had to move the. It uh, didn't symbiont like out. Riker. It didn't like Riker. Yeah, it's like oh, too much jazz. Yeah. Um, 
So uh, yeah, too, too much shirt poker. Tucks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's right. That's what the situation is in the planet is that remember, the hosts have been decimated so much that they don't have enough hosts for all the symbionts that they have. I got you. Okay, I thought maybe the symbionts were also being killed at the same time, but I guess you're right. Like, there's just hosts waiting for symbionts the, who have now died. Presumably, because one of the things that's the interesting thing that seems to happen is that um, sort of like the Starfleet of the planet or Trill, like the best of the best, get to, and they compete for it too, actually. So it's like, oh, will you be accepted or not for the the symbionts? And so um, once they get the host, then they're like, wow, I have all these ambitions. Let me go out into the you know universe or the, or the galaxy or whatever. And so a lot of them were on spaceships, apparently. And then, boom, they blew up. Oh, so okay. um, the uh, symbionts that apparently I'm getting uh, that were on the planet are okay because they're just waiting to be put into the next sure. uh, host. Um, yeah, okay. so, but that now they, they don't have so many... Uh, you know, so that's why they're uh, they're struggling. So, so not only the Federation obviously got derailed by the burn, so did uh, Trill culture. Yeah, apparently. Um, so they're excited. Uh, there's a little kind of a plotty element there where Culber like goes, Burnham, you should go, not a medical officer, because you're anyway. He uses it like a therapy for Burnham. That's fine. But it yeah, felt, yeah, it yeah. felt it, a little plot moment like Yeah, it, it felt like, like who, which cast member do we want to go down yeah. there? Should we sell Culber? Although we have a good reason for Culber to stay on the ship. <laughs> right? Because so, he's got to be a, a, a sympathetic ear to Detmer. And actually, too, to, to, uh, to uh, Stamets, right? So, yeah, they, they, couldn't send, they couldn't send Culber. He's too busy. How can he be in both <laughs> plot points at once? Yeah. <laughs> All right, we'll send Burnham. You go. So Burnham goes to the planet, um, and right away, you know, it's like, oh, this isn't going to work out so well uh, because yeah, they're uh, offended by the fact exclusion. that it's a human. Yeah, yep. yeah. That's and it's very much like, oh, okay, we we don't accept, you know, other creatures being able to do this. And it's it's interesting because it's not just like there's one guy who's like, I'm yes. the dick, but yeah. then also like the leader. <laughs> The woman who's like leading the thing is also like, well, it is an abomination. So yeah, yeah. Like, oh, yeah, okay, like, you know. <laughs> all right. So everyone's kind of we're not going to we're not going to rip you out of there, but it is disgusting. What it you're is doing. really <laughs> terrible. So, so uh, it's like, oh shoot, this isn't going well at all. Um, and they're like, okay, fine, we'll just take you back to your ship. Burnham realizes they're not going back to the ship. She suspects an ambush, which comes. Uh, this part to me was a. I thought this was a little, little ham-handed. Oh right. I, for the sake of the episode, you got to wrap this up in the hour. I get it. But she basically shoots the dick and his two yes. guards who were going yes. to go accost Adira, and um, you know she stuns him. She you they we we said did they remember forget about stun settings? Yeah. <laughs> they remembered stun settings, so that was good, but. You know, like whatever. A half hour later, after waking up, uh, I felt like that guy, the dick, was a little too understanding of like, yeah, you know what? I deserved it. Matt, you shot me, and uh, yep, mea culpa. Uh, it's on me. Um, I think he probably would have continued to be like, wait, this person <laughs> dropped down the planet when I tried to, you know, make my. Uh, feelings known they shot me anyway but you know what it's fine it worked out uh so good hey they are a planet in crisis yep so that's true. he was that's desperate true. enough to kill someone desperate but people do desperate w- things yeah. once he saw that uh you know oh wow this human has successfully uh you know bonded with a right. symbiont you know yep it's like maybe, oh maybe this this is maybe. some kind of way forward yeah so there is one understanding Trill who comes up and like, oh, we'll take you to the caves where uh, the Adira can get those memories back. They go through a, a process. A ritual, yeah. It looks like it's maybe going poorly for Adira, and so Michael Burnham is sent in to, assist, to help Adira find the way back. One thing that you often see 
in uh, stories about multiple personalities is that there needs to be a reunification, right? So, um, like in the story of Sybil, for instance, uh, Sybil, the, the Sally Fields character had to um, sort of greet her uh, personalities and sort of resolve what was going on. Um, and you're this part of me. you have this strength and you have that strength and so it's you know it reminded me of that in a way. That's true. Um, There's that line that Gray has when uh, we're seeing the flashback to before Gray <laughs> was hit with an asteroid. Yes. But, uh, uh, basically says like you know I'm still me. I'm just more of me. I think yes. The way it was it's put. So it's like I you know. I could suddenly play the cello, yes. but I am still gray as well. Like I have gray's memories, but I also have now additional skill sets. I know kung fu. No. Yeah. So, um, right. So, and that's, I think before we had discussed the um, difficulty of understanding exactly what that type of character, and that's certainly where uh, the what we initially what you initially called a ghost. Um, and uh, I, I don't know, personality might be a more accurate term of gray, which just seems to be hanging out with a deer. Right. So it's like, is is gray just a manifestation, an actual, or is it just a uh invisible friend? You know. That's, yeah, and I think it's a visible friend because um, Adira. Sorry, no. Gray questions why. Uh, right. Adira you didn't tell reveal Burnham. that information. Right. Because she think I'm crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing about you know, like uh, this is the future where everybody's like, oh, you have no, to do this. Actually, okay, we a, understand. That is a great point because <laughs> Gray even says, "Do you think?" Talking about Burnham, do you think she'd understand? Yeah. And like, yeah, yeah, I think she would actually. Yeah. So I think that's coming, right? I think there's a yeah. moment coming where it's like, and it's, yes, great. Yeah, and I, you know, that's it's it, one of the interesting things, and I'm sure there are people who are, are not happy about uh, this current Star Trek. Um, but yeah, they they make a point of showing you, yes, we're okay with other cultures. That's the point, which they stressed even further in Next Generation. Right? It was like, okay, we're going to firm up the whole, uh, you know, not judging other other cultures for what they are. You know, we're Starfleet. We we're, we're accepting of other people. So. It's interesting yep. that uh, um, maybe just establishing from a character point of view, you just don't. Uh, you, you, it's hard to feel confident that you're going to be accepted for who you really are. Right, right. Acceptance is certainly a major uh, plot point uh, for this, probably for this season, frankly, but for mm. this episode as well. I'd say it's for the series, really. You know, look at like what's all the stuff that's going on in terms of um, uh, Michael. You know, and Michael's sort of like, oh, look what I've done. I, you know, trusted my instincts uh, instead of uh, going with my captain. And so as a result of that, I rebelled. And so, you know, but she had to be accepted again by the crew and, and, and everybody. And now they accept her. And um, look at what's going on with uh, Saru, you know, in terms of uh, initially he, everybody thought he had sort of one sort of person. But once he changed and actually there was a fear you know, of of this one aspect of them, and they really were changing. And then, you know, oh, now you see Saru in this very different light than he was originally. So I think it's themes that uh, throughout this current season, but then if you go back, certainly throughout Star Trek, they're there. I agree, sir. Well put. It was revealed that the reason why uh, it was so difficult for them to reacquaint or, or bond with the symbiont was the difficult memory that they had about when it happened. Obviously, Adira is a human, so there is the sense of like, oh, maybe it's the fact that Adira is a human is yeah. why there's this difficulty in accessing memories. But perhaps, maybe the reason is that the way that the uh, the way that Adira attained the trill was as a result of the death of Gray, uh, and so basically that memory is so painful. That perhaps Adira has just blocked out everything, you know, trill related. Uh, yeah. To deal with that. And so that was a, and I think that worked really well actually. The way that Michael was helping Adira um, adjust and accept, you know, or, or confront that memory. 
Right, um, right. And it, this was not loss. a this this was not a pew 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 type episode. Yeah, no. Uh, but I think yes. Yeah, well, there was a little pew pew. Yes, right, right. Stun, stun, stun. Yeah. Don't hold us against me. Um, but uh, um, but I think there was some very effective storytelling in this, and that yeah. that certainly was one. This this backstory to the pain uh, that led to this moment, uh, and now you know Adira not only has that pain, but then has the memories of right. this loved one. You know that will go on forever. Like they're like they're there, which is peaceful in some ways, but also yeah. probably tragic. It's a it's it's a complicated emotion there. Yeah, and it makes me wonder actually about how old this symbiont is, because I would have expected to see more hosts. Oh, good point. <laughs> there were maybe five, something like that, five or six. Yeah, six. Yeah, um, some of them were old people, like the admiral. Admiral Senatal was old. Now, not to say, you know. We don't know when the trill was introduced, but yeah, perhaps if you interesting, like know. if we average, like it is the future, so maybe uh, life expectancy is maybe around a hundred years. That doesn't seem like, based on those on that number of people, that the symbiont has been around right. for a thousand years. That's you what think the yeah. symbiont's been around for like five hundred years. Maybe. Right, exactly. Yeah. So you know, yeah. I think that's an interesting plot point. If the like, okay, yeah, I remember this technology from when I was around. A thousand years ago, <laughs> it actually would be kind of cool, right? To be like, yeah, oh I yeah, so. I have this knowledge of of your time because I was there, I experienced it. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I feel like maybe they either missed that boat or maybe maybe they, they deliberately chose us not to, to make it yeah. that broad. Which you know, right. I don't have a problem with it. I just it, that would have been very interesting. There were only five actors available that day. Like, <laughs> All right, just bring them in. Bring in whoever maybe we got. It'll be fine. <laughs> Uh, or uh, so. don't or don't change uh, Adira into Legion. It's probably not going to be a plot point, but maybe. I mean, Adira and Gray are on a ship, and that ship is a year ago, and that ship is struck by a big yeah, old yeah. space rock. It looked like, um, and so was that. You know what's that all about? Like, in other words, mm. is that is that related to some plot point? Like, oh, mm. that was the thing that killed the ship. Oh my god! Blah, blah, blah. I don't know. There might be some revelation of like maybe mm. it was an attack of some kind. Maybe right, they were right. going through some weird asteroid field for some reason. I don't know. Right. Anyway, and then as an you know the end product, yes, they now know there's an algorithm, and Adira quickly figured it out. And like, aha, this is where Senatal was uh, directing us to uh, the Federation secret location. Back on the ship, Saru is attempting to figure out a way to, uh, you know, deal with this PTSD of the crew. And notably, the ship's computer yeah. kind of starts giving suggestions and transforms a bit. There's like a little, almost like a glitch in a Matrix moment, like, and then it's yeah. talking in a female voice. You can sort of um, see the, the transition in that first it's like, uh, okay, here, <laughs> and <laughs> in a way, it's sort of like, why would you have gone there in the first place? Why would you <laughs> ask this computer for suggestions when you had, like, Culber there initially saying, you know, why don't you just, like, could you stick around so we can talk about this? <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, and his buddy, like, a lot of times, uh, you know, Saru likes to talk to Tilly, but no, okay, he's going to talk to the computer. No. So they can have this thing happen, right? Where it's sort of There's like... There's probably think, an Excel chart that'll tell me. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, think outside the box, which, you know, is, you could compare it to that Star Trek episode where it's like, Oh, I want you, uh, Watson, to be a challenge to Data. Oh, sorry, sure. no, uh, Moriarty. Uh, to, Moriarty. Moriarty to be a challenge to Data. So you have to be as smart as Data to be a challenge to him, and that makes him become sentient. <laughs> <laughs> In this case, we figure out that it's the sphere data, or at least that's. I think, that, it. I think it almost certainly is. Uh, it's that's a theory that uh, that Saru Saru comes has. up with, and it's yeah. It's reasonable, yeah. uh, but it, it it does sound when I first heard the computer talking, I you know because I we was were like, oh, it's happening, cynical. it's happening. Uh, it sounded creepy as hell, and I, yeah, I was like, is this control? Because or the fact was, they, he was just setting it in the in the framework of look, 
the whole crew has gone through this terrible ordeal, yes. and we're not fine, even though we think we're fine. So then I thought they were adding on the layer of, and the ship isn't fine either. <laughs> like the ship went through this because the ship's like. Let's get the ship a counselor. <laughs> the, yeah, we need a, the ship counselor. Where's Berlin is a and ship. Troy when we? Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but because the suggestion of the ship sounds creepy in the moment, it's like, like. Uh, why don't you bring all the crew into one place uh, for a dinner, perhaps? I'll select them. I'm like, oh, my God, the ship's going to kill them all off. Please put and them And it does look like they're in the hangar. So it's like, yeah. boom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Decompress. I'll, an asteroid will come and smash into you. Um, so it's not, it doesn't go the creepy route, yeah, which is no. good. Um, yes. But... Good so yeah, the sphere data is apparently protecting the crew in some way by giving and and part of that is by giving them emotional uh, well being. Yeah, but that's the result though. Like one of the things yeah. that that they try to do is have everybody sit down for a meal, and yeah. so it gives everybody a chance to uh, interact a little more. And so we be able to see exactly what's keeping them from, uh, or at least things that are bubbling below the surface that they can let go. So in terms of Detmer, um, you know, just how she's really been struggling emotionally with all this, um, and certainly some resentments to Stamets uh, for how he's dealing with, with his particular thing. And, you know, you could certainly look at the Stamets thing as the thing that you bristled against is him having to... Um, Stamets feeling like, oh, right, I can just do point. this, you know? Yeah. So they're bringing that back That's by saying, point. you know, like, you know, if you trusted your crew members more and didn't feel like you were above them and, and you know, right. whatever. My point in the previous recap was that Stamets, you know, insists on doing this ship task, even though he's not up for the job. Right, yes. And is, in fact, told, you know, other people could do this. And he's like, no, no, let me put the crew at risk. Yes. <laughs> and so, yeah, so, yeah, good point. It did come back around. Um, yeah. Because Detmer, yeah, is harboring ill feelings towards Stamets, and you you put this in better perspective for me when we talked before we started recording. Because originally, when I saw this originally, I was just like, I didn't get Detmer's. Oh Detmer, right. they're doing haikus, yeah, and <laughs> it's kind of light. And then, of course, it's not light when it hits Detmer, and she's like. Stamets's blood. How is Stamets's blood is on the you know like. <laughs> And I didn't, uh, I don't know, I wasn't, I wasn't grasping that. I just thought it was a little, it didn't read to me. But you had a really good explanation for what's happening there. I'll, I'll right. Well, uh, superficially, although I'd like to see it explored more, and I think they will once uh, she starts talking about it. But, um, and to me, it makes sense if you think about her being angry that, uh, you know, everything is, is okay when, when she doesn't think it is. You know, uh, and so choosing an example of how um, uh, Stamets nearly died is the way by saying, oh, this blood is happening in this blood or whatever. I think that's what it is. Her anger at sort of um, this attempt to make her sort of play games. Right, you know, right. Really like, suffering. are we really sitting around here playing haikus? Yeah, and yeah. Pretending yeah. everything is just hunky dory when actually. Yes. We're in life and death situations. Like, screw you. It was kind of a screw you, basically. Yeah, I think yeah, it yeah. was. You know, and um, it's not. Uh, uh, I was perhaps identifying with it because if anybody told me that, hey, <laughs> just, just off your hop of your head, come up with a haiku. No, we're gonna no. play some improv games, and yeah. uh, I think we'll all get over the. Yeah, like what? Yeah. No. Think of, anybody know, so got a term? Yeah. Not the. Uh, Sort of uh, passive derision that George U was 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 expressing, no, right? But right. true anger, and you know, uh, we heard from her. We heard from um, oh, and Tilly. Tilly uh, talked about we, throwing up on an ambassador. <laughs> yes, right. No, but Tilly was able to say, like you know, to Stamets also that you know the way he was blowing her off yeah, um, was was uncalled for. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's like you know, well, it's not just about you, and and what's that about? Um, and yeah, so we do it. see that you know eventually, uh, uh, Stamets apologizes to Tilly, also yes. to Tilly for blowing her off. 
he and discussing her what earlier. presumably is going to be. I mean, they may change right. their minds, but this may be the solution to their dilithium problem. Is is right. uh, that uh, what is she's it? got an idea to say use dark matter dark to matter, that's right. get to this mycelial network, and so you don't have to have a human host. So they're interface, completely interface, yeah. reliant on Stamets, and if Stamets died. Uh, they'd be screwed. Yeah, and I should really send a thank you note to Saru because he's all like, um, 900 years of computer progress. And You called it last guys, week. Yeah. It's like, you brought this up. <laughs> you were like, why haven't they figured out? A yeah, yeah. Agreed. So well done, sir. Yeah, so uh, I mean, so sort of like, you know, yeah, I mean, I, I, if I was doing the show, I'd be peppering all sorts of things. Like, you know, I've been looking into this programmable matter. It's really very interesting. Like, what other scientific advances have been made? You, yeah. They should be, everybody on the ship should be talking about shit like that because they're all experts in their time. And now it's sort of like, oh, uh, you know, um, uh, Edville, uh, Orville, right? Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, here's some nuclear, you know, uh, information. Here's here's an example of a nuclear bomb. Here's an example of, you know, of, of a yeah. rocket ship. You know, here's exactly. information like, about the stars. Back in my day, we yeah. had movable type, <laughs> exactly. and I would, you know, like, whoa, okay, we've got. We yeah, here's a, a computer, now. you know, and here's yeah. a, a screen, a monitor. Uh, <laughs> I think they are moving to the idea of. It'll all be automated. It doesn't require a person, and it's going to be they're going to be able to do the spore drive, and which also lends itself to that notion we talked about last week, which is perhaps this is going to be a replacement in some way for dilithium. You know, uh, that yeah, the new yeah, form yeah. of space travel in this time will be spore drive. Um, now, it certainly well, would, because presumably, yeah, actually, I shouldn't say that, right? Um, yeah, this, even currently, even in their current time, this would be an advancement. So 900 years in the future, they still can't traverse the same amount of distance. Right, book is I like, mean, whoa, you never told me they spin or whatever. Like, yeah, yeah. no idea, <laughs> yeah. never heard of this. Like, what? <laughs> well, that's the thing that presumably is not really necessary. Some guy was like, it's got oh, let's have it spin and then <laughs> shoot off. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you throw up on the ambassador. Yeah. <laughs> um, so one thing that um, I thought about is, so the sphere data, we end with um, the sphere data is showing a uh, Buster Keaton movie. Yeah. To try to lighten the mood. Um, and so I'm reminded, and, you know, I get, this may not be anything, but I am reminded of that short trek oh, right. Calypso. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went back and kind of reviewed it a little bit just to be like, eh, what are some of the thoughts? So, so on the Calypso, which uh, according to that short trek, the AI on board the Discovery has been alone for a thousand years. So right. that would be a thousand years from now if, they, if it started Yeah, if today. it happens after. So right. that's a long, long, long yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so the, the AI is called Zora at that point. Wow. And Zora's been alone upgrading the ship over that time. Just like, do, 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 got nothing better to do. Um, and one of the things that I, that I was like, oh, yeah, Zora really, uh, to, to pass the time in her loneliness watches old movies. Uh, in fact, oh, yeah, uh, right. Funny Face was the movie that she was like, oh, this movie's really fun. So right, right, right. there is this bit of a connection to the fact That's that That's the sphere data suggests, you know how to deal with loneliness. Yeah. Why don't we watch a Buster Keaton movie? Yeah. So um, it could be a suggestion that perhaps the sphere data, what we're seeing, how the sphere data is uh, integrating with the ship, could end up as Zora a thousand years from now. Mm, interesting. Uh, so anyway, that, so perhaps that's like a last episode of Discovery. They get off board and leave the ship to its you know, own devices or something. Yeah, interesting. It's sort of be um, uh, similar to how presumably in Strange New Worlds, uh, the end would be when Pike has that final adventure. Yeah, good point. Well, also, maybe there's that thought of, for whatever reason, you know, it, it comes to the point where they would decommission the ship or ah, right. blow it up or something, but it's yeah. it's sentient, and they're like, it's a life form. We don't want to destroy it, ah. so we'll we'll let this life form go, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> let it, let it uh, fly off let the it, stud. <laughs> right. Let it be completely <laughs> alone, go crazy. <laughs> 
and you know, then kill off humanity. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> He'll find it'll find other ships to breed with and start right. a family. Oh, back in the day, the, this whole valley was filled with spaceships, but now <laughs> there's only one. Oh, also, I did enjoy that Adira Adira's gift to Gray is this like a memory quilt. Oh like, yeah. Hey, here's a quilt of all the little fun things we experienced together. Yeah. Uh, and you know that obviously plays well with the theme of this episode, which is re- oh yeah, retaining memories. Right. Um, and uh, so that that was kind of like a little shorthand for here's our relationship in quilt form. Um, so I thought that was a a fitting gift for yeah, this that particular was, episode. Yeah, that was a nice touch. But I really enjoyed the episode. I thought. Uh, it handled the drama especially well in the, where the characters um, you know existed in the in the show I think how they expressed themselves was was well done I agree I agree strong writing uh, in this time around so well done show <laughs> and uh, I look forward to seeing the the crew arrive at the secret federation location uh, next week so uh, yeah we'll be back talking about that and we'll be talking about the Mandalorian. So come on yes. back for that. Thank you as always, Paul. Appreciate it, sir. Sure. And goodbye, everybody. Bye.